<laughs> hey, you guys hungry? Definitely. Very hungry. Oh, well, good. Come sit down. Let's eat. Heather pushed me high on the swing. Well, I hope you guys were safe. We were, Mom. So I was thinking. <coughs> Are you okay? I think there might be peanuts in that. But you're allergic to peanuts. <coughs> Don't let this happen to you. Hello, my name is Elle, and I'm with the Code Anna program. Code Anna, short for anaphylaxis, is an outreach initiative whose mission is to provide education to schools and community groups about medical issues such as food allergy and anaphylaxis. Today, we're going to discuss in detail how to recognize and how to respond to allergic reactions, including a severe allergic reaction, also called anaphylaxis. Let's review some of the common causes of allergic reactions. People may have different types of allergic reactions to a variety of substances. The substances are called allergens. Common allergens include venoms from insect bites and stings, such as bees. Foods, the most common food allergens being peanut, tree nuts, egg, milk, wheat, soy, fin fish, and shellfish. And medications such as antibiotics, seizure medicines, muscle relaxants, aspirin, and over-the-counter medications. People can be allergic to plants like poison ivy and to plant pollens. Latex, adhesives, soaps, and makeup can also contain allergens. So now you know what some of the common elements that can cause an allergic reaction are. What are the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction? The signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction can range from sneezing and watery eyes to low blood pressure and even death. We can break these down into signs and symptoms by body system. General signs and symptoms include itchy, watery eyes, runny nose, and possibly a headache. Skin signs and symptoms may include swelling of the face, lips, tongue, neck, or hands. Hives, which are red, raised, itchy bumps, may also appear. Respiratory signs and symptoms may include wheezing, coughing, rapid, noisy, and or difficulty breathing. Noisy breathing, sudden change in or loss of one's voice, trouble swallowing or strider, which is a high-pitched noise during inhalation. Serious breathing problems, also called respiratory distress, is one sign that an individual is having a severe allergic reaction, anaphylaxis. Circulation problems found in an allergic reaction may include an increase in heart rate, a decrease in blood pressure, and cool, clammy skin, which may indicate blood is not flowing well within a person's body. This is called hypoperfusion. These are also red flags that the person is having a severe allergic reaction, anaphylaxis. A person's mental status or the level of consciousness may change as allergic reactions can result in confusion, agitation, fainting, loss of consciousness. Anaphylaxis can result in death. So how can I tell it is a severe allergic reaction that needs an epinephrine auto-injector? Epinephrine should be administered with the auto-injector if a person who has a history of allergies or allergic reactions has come in contact with a substance that causes the allergic reaction. If a person who may or may not have a history of allergies is having symptoms of an allergic reaction, such as difficulty breathing, respiratory distress, and any other signs of an allergic reaction, such as feeling their throat closing or swelling of the tongue and or lips, hives, vomiting, and or a change in mentation, you should promptly use the epinephrine auto-injector. Now that you know when the situation calls for the use of the epinephrine auto-injector, what about the dosage? Does the epinephrine come in more than one size or dose? Yes, epinephrine auto-injectors come in three doses, one adult dose and two pediatric doses. Generally, the adult dose, 0.3 milligrams, is for individuals who weigh 66 pounds or more. The pediatric dose, 0.15 milligrams, is for children weighing 33 to 66 pounds. For smaller children who weigh 17 to 33 pounds, the 0.1 milligram dose should be used. Always call 911 when using epinephrine. 
For children less than 17 pounds, ask 911 how to proceed. Ideally, a person at risk for an allergic reaction will have a physician-signed anaphylaxis care plan. If so, follow the physician-recommended instructions. Let's say you encounter someone with a severe allergic reaction. What should you do first? Your first step is to administer the epinephrine. If available at the same time, have someone call 911 or your local emergency number and request an ambulance for a severe allergic reaction. If you are alone, call 911 immediately after administering the epinephrine autoinjector. It is critical to activate your local emergency medical services, EMS, system as quickly as possible. A person with a severe allergic reaction may require additional advanced life support medications or emergency life-saving procedures. Also imperative, all patients who receive epinephrine must be evaluated by a physician immediately. EMS is the safest method of transport for a person who is having an allergic reaction. Knowing that in an encounter with a severe allergic reaction, you should administer the epinephrine first. Let's talk about how you do administer the epinephrine with the auto-injector. So I was thinking, <coughs> are you okay? I think there might be peanuts in that. But you're allergic to peanuts. <coughs> are you feeling better? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna call 911. Okay, thanks. Here is a step-by-step -step on how to administer epinephrine. Before using the medication, try calming the person who is having the reaction as much as possible. Have the person lay down and try to elevate his or her feet. Laying down is especially important in a person who has an altered mental status or cool, clammy skin. If oxygen is available and someone who is trained in oxygen is available, administer a high concentration of oxygen. Here is a step-by-step -step on how to administer epinephrine. Step one, remove the safety cap from the auto-injector. Check to see that the fluid within the device is clear and colorless. Never put your fingers or thumb over the needle end, which is denoted by the red or orange cap, depending on the device. Avoid this area when removing the auto-injector from its safety cap and when holding the auto-injector after the safety cap has been removed. Step two, place the tip of the auto-injector against the person's outer thigh, halfway between the waist and the knee. Ideally, the person's leg is bare, but the needle within the auto-injector can be safely and effectively administered through clothing. Step three, with a quick and firm motion, Press the auto-injector against the thigh until the spring-loaded needle is activated. You may feel a click and hold the auto-injector in place for three to 10 seconds, depending on the device. Step four, remove the auto-injector from the thigh and document the time of injection. Step five, depending on the device and your setting, you may want to carefully insert the used auto-injector without the safety cap needle first into its carrying tube. Never put your fingers over the needle end of the device, especially after the safety cap has been removed. You will give the tube to the EMS personnel so they know exactly what you have given and can appropriately dispose at the hospital. Also provide them with the exact time that you administered the epinephrine. Step six, if you or someone with you has not yet called 911, call them now. Keep the 911 operator on the phone with you until EMS arrives. Until EMS arrives, continue to monitor the person and try to keep him or her calm. Note whether the person improves or worsens as you may need to give another dose of epinephrine or start CPR if needed. Consult with the 911 operator in making these decisions. But what will the patient feel when you use the epinephrine auto-injector? The injection itself may feel uncomfortable to some people, though others may not feel the medication being injected. Soon after the injection, the patient should begin to feel the beneficial effects of the drug, such as an improvement in mental state and breathing. The patient may also feel a more rapid heartbeat. He or she may also feel some side effects, such as a slight nervousness, palpitations, sweating, dizziness, and a headache. Once emergency medical services, EMS, arrives on the scene and you have administered epinephrine, what information do they need to know? 
EMS needs to know as much about what happened to the person who had the reaction, the patient, as possible. The information you share with EMS should be as accurate and concise as possible, especially if an epinephrine autoinjector was used. If possible, provide EMS with the following information. The substance or allergen to which the patient was exposed, when the exposure occurred, the signs and symptoms experienced by the patient that prompted the use of the epinephrine autoinjector, and the call to 911 the time and dose of epinephrine administered, and changes in signs and symptoms after the epinephrine was administered, and any other information you can provide, such as name, age, guardian, and his or her contact information, and medical history. All this information can be documented using the code and a quick note for medical emergency response documentation. How should epinephrine autoinjectors be stored? An epinephrine autoinjector needs to be stored in a proper environment. It needs to be in a location that can be easily accessed in the event of an emergency. It needs to be kept away from children and stored within its protective plastic carrying tube in which it is supplied. Also, epinephrine needs to be kept at a room temperature between 68 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. It should not be refrigerated, nor should it be exposed to extreme heat, such as a glove compartment or a trunk of a car. Epinephrine is light sensitive, so do not expose it to direct sunlight, as light and heat can cause epinephrine to degrade and or turn brown. Does the epinephrine auto-injector expire? Does it need to be replaced? As with other medications, yes. Epinephrine does expire and does need to be replaced prior to its expiration date. The expiration date is printed on the epinephrine auto-injector. Have a plan in place for how often you will check the expiration date and request a replacement. Code Anna recommends the auto-injector be checked every month for both expiration date and to make sure the liquid is clear and colorless as discoloration of the epinephrine would be an indication for replacement. If the device is discolored or expiration is approaching, contact your prescribing entity for replacement instructions and for instruction on correct disposal. Epinephrine auto-injectors must be safely disposed of in compliance with government regulations at licensed pharmacies, healthcare facilities, or healthcare practitioners who can prescribe the device. All right, knowing that, can the auto-injector unit cause injury? An epinephrine auto-injector is genuinely very safe and easy to use. Do remember the unit does contain a sharp needle and do not remove the safety cap until you are ready to use the auto-injector. Never put your fingers over the needle end, orange or red colored, of the device when removing the safety cap or after the safety cap has been removed. And do not try to replace the safety cap once it has been removed. Depending on the device and your setting, you may want to carefully insert the used auto-injector without the safety cap, needle first into its carrying tube and close the tube if possible. Never put your fingers over the needle end of the device, especially after the safety cap has been removed. You will give the tube to the EMS personnel upon their arrival. To minimize the risk of an injection-related injury, especially when administering the medication to a child, Caregivers should firmly hold the child's legs still and limit movement prior to and during administration of epinephrine. Now let's see exactly who can use an epinephrine auto-injector. Per the New York State Department of Health Bureau of Emergency Medical Services and Trauma Systems, New York State Public Health Law authorizes the possession and use of an epinephrine auto-injector by an eligible person or entity This allows a person involved with an eligible entity to administer epinephrine to individuals with or without a history of allergies, allergic reactions, who have a severe allergic reaction even if the patient doesn't have his or her prescribed auto-injector with them. All participating individuals must complete this or another training program in the use of epinephrine auto-injector devices So, how is the epinephrine auto-injector obtained? A healthcare practitioner or pharmacist who is authorized to prescribe drugs may prescribe, 
dispense or provide an epinephrine auto-injector device to or for an eligible person or entity by a non-patient-specific prescription. So now you have a stronger knowledge of epinephrine auto-injector and what to do in an encounter with an allergic reaction. And that knowledge could very well save a life. Are you okay? I think there could have been peanuts in that. thinking. Are you okay? I think there could have been peanuts in that. You feeling it all better? A little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go call 911. Okay, thanks mom.